deals with the distribution of a sum of random variables. There are many versions, I'm going to do a simpler version of this and do it here. So if you add up a large number of random variables, what happens to its distribution? And I'm going to normalize it also. It's just a constant. So whatever is the nature of the distribution. So what we want to find out is so this one. What is the distribution of the distribution of the density function of the of the sum of the random variables? So of course the, so the density function in general will depend on x1, x2, etc. So the interesting result in central limit theorem is it doesn't matter what these density uh, random variables are or their density function. If you add a large number of random variables, let me start with them being independent. That's the case I'm going to prove. Uh, so, sloppily speaking, if you add a large number of random variables, the density function will begin to look Gaussian. So, so that's the important So, this density function is going to be normal. So, that's what we are going to prove. So, let me assume uh, again. It, that uh, these expected values of x i s are, uh, uh, let's say, uh, some mean, and the variances of uh, x i s uh, sigma i squared. So, and rather than deal with this quantity, just to make it uh, simpler, I am going to, uh, I'm going to define. Uh, x i to be so let me call these to be x i tilde so x i to be the old random variable minus mean. So let me ask you this: Remember, these random variables have a given mean and given variance. So what is the mean of this random variable? What is the variance of this random variable? Anyone? What you, from what we have learned. Oh, that's good. So I hope you see that because the mean is this mean minus constant, so that's zero. Variance is if you scale by a constant, the variance gets scaled by square of the constant. So sigma squared over sigma squared, sigma i squared over sigma i squared will be one. So what I have done is I uh, just normalize these random variables. Their mean is zero, and the variances of uh, these random variables. You could use some other notation. I just want that I since I, I want to keep. So uh, this is y tilde. So I'm going to look at. Uh, so y tilde is just the, the sum. Here I'm going to look at uh, a scaled version of x i x. So question is, what is the density function of y? Uh, so let me start with the characteristic function of y. So this is where you will see a useful application of uh, characteristic functions. That allows us to solve certain problems quickly. So this is by definition e raised to j omega y. Let me substitute for y. So e raised to j omega. Uh, x i uh, sigma x i over square root of sigma. Uh, expected value. So this is e raised to j omega over square root of n. So, e raised to j uh, summation, right? so exponential summation is the product of the uh, expected values, right? uh, expected value of the product, right? so product i equal to 1 through n e to the power j omega over square root of n x, right? You can write that. Now, I don't know whether I mentioned to you, so you now I am going to, I am going to do the case where these xi's are also independent. There is a general case where this combination is not the case, but the proof is going to be for independent. So if these random variables are independent, 
look at this. This is like the product of function. So what how expectation of the product of function will be? So it will be the product. So the product sign will come outside. So that is product sign i equal to 1 to 10 expected value e raised to j omega over square root of m x. Anybody knows what is this function? Expected value of this, what is that? It looks like this, look at here. So this is what? This is the characteristic function of which random variable? Gaussian, there is no Gaussian here. Right, so it is the, it is the characteristic function of uh, uh, this. So this is, you also identify this as x i is characteristic function of omega over square root of uh, no, but that's no use because we don't know what the x i is. Look at that. Interestingly, I didn't even tell you what the x i is density functions are. I have not. We, uh, so, <laughs> Nothing, nothing is known about xi except that it's a mean and variance. So what I mean, since I don't have the exact uh, density function, I cannot compute this. But I can expand an e to the power e, right? This is the expansion of e. So I can write this as product i equal to 1 through n, expected value of uh, this quantity. So what is the expansion of e raised to x? Anyone? 1 plus uh, x plus x squared by 2. So this is your whole x, so that's j square root of omega in x i. And next term is j squared omega squared in uh, x i squared over 2 factorial. What's the third term? Anyone? So I'll write the nth term, j n, or uh, mth term, j m n to the power m by 2, omega to the power m, x to the x i to the power m, over m factorial, etc. Right? That's just the expansion. Expected value is a linear operation, so I'm going to do, uh, so this will become now uh, product i equal to 1 through n. Then I have 1 uh, plus j omega square root of n, expected value of x i. Uh, j squared is minus 1, omega squared uh, 2n, expected value of xi squared uh, plus x uh, jk, it doesn't matter, uh, n to the power k by 2, k factorial, uh, expected value of xi k, omega to the power uh, k, etc. So, anybody, what is the expected value of xi? Couple of terms we can simplify. This is zero, right? and this is here. Yeah, one is zero, one is one. Right? Because variance is like so. Let me write a third term also here. So, the third term will be j cubed or omega cubed expected value of xi cubed over yeah, n to the power 3 by 2, 3 factor. So this is 1. So I hope you can see that uh, Yeah, you can see what is going on. This term will have 3 by 2, the next term will have n squared, etc. So what this O means is that all of them are, here the denominator has a small n, the next term has n to the power 3 by 2 n squared, all higher order powers of beyond the 3 by 2. Uh, and there's some constant. So we are just one interesting thing is we, because n is going to be large, we are going to we are going to take the limiting case when n goes to infinity. That's what we want. So what's the value? So if you have a very large number of random variables added up, uh, what happens? So as n goes to infinity, you write down the So that <coughs> rather than write 
one more line, let me only write it here. So this is going to be, you know, but look at here, there is no i. There is no i because all this expected value of xi squared is just 1. So if there is no i, the same thing is to raise to the power n. So I can write this as 1 minus omega squared over 2n plus factors which are go decrease very faster than n to the power n. So anybody remembers uh, anything? <laughs> what, what is the result of this? 1 minus x over n to the power n. Limit x n to infinity. Huh? So if this was not there, then the limit would be what? Suppose this wasn't there. One. What about this one? It's a standard identity. Exponential one. Do you know how it comes? You just start expanding this as a binomial, and then that binomial terms will be the same as this. So what is this quantity? Anyone? What this size is this negligible? So this will begin to look like e to the power minus omega squared by two. What is this the characteristic function of? We have studied this characteristic function. Alright, so this is a Gaussian with the zero mean and unit variance. So we have proved that we simply add a large number of independent random variables. The overall distribution begins to look like Gaussian. So this will begin to look like like this. So, we are considering the limiting case. <laughs> so, that's a one version of this, simple version of this. So, because I divided by this variance and so on, I think that this version requires <coughs> uh, we have finite variance. Finite variance is a requirement because it involves this division. So let me summarize uh, the result. If you <coughs> if you add up a bunch of uh, independent random variables with the finite variance, their sum will begin to look like uh, Gaussian. So if you look at it, if you don't want this one, what will happen to the density function? I'm going to multiply. This random variable is being multiplied by square root of n. So what will happen to the distribution? Anyone? A, a Gauss, it will be still Gaussian because you are only scaling. So mean is still zero, variance will be. Huh? I just multiply the y by square root of n. Y has that distribution. Y, if I multiply by y, what, what is the change? It is still Gaussian, but the variance becomes. And so this distribution, what will be the difference? The distribution will look like this. So if you take a large number of random variables, of course, if you don't scale, you can see the variance goes up and up. The variance becomes 2. So whichever way you, you don't like this 2n, then just to scale it. So that will look like a, a uniform, I mean, a, a Gaussian random variable. My one condition I mentioned was this one. So the condition is that this, uh, of course, the, the, the random variance of the random variables sigma i squared need to be finite. So let me take this case. Uh, say all the x's are Cauchy. Uh, then the density function is okay. The density function is what is it to sum? Pi over, pi over alpha e <coughs> x squared plus alpha squared. Anybody remembers what the characteristic function is for Cauchy? Huh? I think it is of this form because the tra transform of this is maybe a constant. But it is Yes. Then I think 
add up a bunch of Cauchy, if you exercise a bunch of Cauchy, look at what happens now. So from here, the characteristic function of Z is, these are all independent, independent Cauchy. So the characteristic sum is uh, e to the power j omega sigma xi. So that becomes the product of the characteristic functions of xi. Each xi is like this, same parameter. So then this becomes this is the characteristic function of this term. But look, this is contradicting this because this is not Gaussian. Yes, this is what is this characteristic function? Anyone? What is this characteristic function? What way? What random variable corresponds to uh, it? What? Cauchy is what is it? Cauchy is back to except with a different parameter. But does anyone remember what is the variance of a Cauchy random variable? See, this is where the probability would help. Variance is if you uh, both mean and variance are undefined, it blows up for Cauchy. Look at here, you can see from here for variance, you have to compute integral expected x squared multiplied by the density function 1 over alpha squared plus x squared. Uh, it's a constant, let's say pi over alpha or something. So, or if you integrate this from minus infinity to plus infinity, do you see why it is uh, closer? Yes or no? Because look, on the here you here you have x squared, plus add alpha squared and subtract it alpha squared. So you can see this is two integrals. The so first integral is just this. x squared plus alpha squared will cancel with this. The other one is of course the area under the density function, but this will blow up to infinity. So a Cauchy density function has got uh, unbounded variance. So the central limit theorem does not apply to Cauchy. Uh, uh, I, be, I believe Cauchy came up with this uh, density function just to show as a counterexample to this. And uh, that's when this condition was added up. So the correct statement is uh, uh, if you have a bunch of random variables with finite variance, there or the overall sum distribution will tend to be Gaussian under mild the conditions. One condition is that the variances of them should be fine. And if you scale them properly, you can make the the, 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 the sum density function to have finite uh, to have uh, whatever variance you want. <coughs> 